Hello chess fans and welcome to that of chess channel and welcome back to the computer bullet chess championship in 2022 so so far it was a beautiful and sharp tournament played by many many top engines in some beautiful lines in some beautiful openings that are possible in chess and like usual the stockfish engine is in the lead stockfish has a comfortable lead in front of every other engine but uh, we have a little bit of a surprise because recently the dragon engine finished many times on the second place behind uh, the stockfish engine but now Lila C0 is on the second place so probably we'll have sort of the old uh, super final between Lila C0 and Stockfish so okay um, among many many beautiful games I've sorted out really a sharp beautiful tactical game played by Stockfish against Ethereal in the Queen's Indian defense and the beauty about this game is actually uh, that many times in chess you probably witnessed some pawn sacrifices where one uh, one player is of course uh, sacrificing a pawn just in order to have a beautiful activity to maybe reach an attacking formation to maybe even just activate one particular piece or to maybe Maybe create another tactical threat in the game but here the wild thing about stockfish game was that stockfish sacrificed two pawns in front of its own king which is really wild when it comes to tactics you should not of course endanger your own king but that's the, well, exactly what stockfish did here sacrifice just two pawns just in order to create some kind of an activity but of course expose uh, its own king and that's the beauty about this game because from that point on the game become became really wild from that point on the game became really really a sharp tactical battle so let's check out now this beautiful gameplay by the stockfish engine so here the first move was d4 we have knight to f6 by ethereal we have c4 e6 and after move knight to f3 we have the anti nimzo or counter nimzo indian setup because if you play knight to c3 probably you'll get pinned with the move bishop to b4 and then we would reach of course the nimzo indian defense so here after move knight to f3 we have now the move uh, b6 which is now uh, the queen's indian defense because of course uh, black is waiting now why to find to get out with the knight and then again we could reach a similar position like in the nimzo indian with the move bishop to b4 so that's why white is many times still delaying the move with the knight on c3 play simply around this move waits uh, black to play bishop to e7 or something waits this bishop's move and then when that happens then we want to develop the knight on c3 because then we don't get the risk uh, here to get bent by the bishop so here after move g3 we have now the move bishop to a6 which is now the so-called Nimtsovich variation of for the Vienheta variation of the uh, Queen's Indian defense. Bishop to a6 makes real sense because uh, you want to force now a queen move, queen to c2, or you want to play, uh, force your opponent to play the move b3, where the pawn structure uh, here in front of the king could be a little bit weakened, then you could face many star square problems. So here the continuation, queen to c2 was still uh, the prearranged line, and after move bishop to b4, we have bishop to d2. Now we have bishop to e7. Probably uh, now this idea, bishop to b4, bishop to e7 it's not working this idea would be working if you would play uh, the move b3 then the main line would be bishop to b4 bishop to e7 after move queen to c2 probably the best way here for black is to proceed with the move c5 to let the position explode now in the center and now after something like bishop to uh bishop to g2 now to continue with the pressure around the square d4 by playing knight to c6 because the queen has left a little bit the protection of uh, the d4 and now probably the game would lead into a very very aggressive line with the move d5 something like e takes d5 c takes d5 could be a possibility knight to d5 and you see now uh here queen kingside casting is an opportunity so many many games have been played in this sharp lines i've played also several times the game from black perspective i didn't have really good success because uh you have to in one particular moment retreat with the bishop on b7 and now after rook to d1 uh you have to know your tactics you have to play now bishop to e7 uh so as i said these are simply must know sort of lines in the queen's indian defense now rook to d5 is not working because of knight to b4 and similar stuff so there are many many dirty traps also in this type of structure so as i said bishop to b4 probably not the best of lines that uh, that black can play uh, c5 in my opinion much much better but you know in this pre-arranged openings uh, played by top engines there are many many dubious lines there are many bad lines and basically one engine has sort of an advantage in an early stage of the game so okay bishop to d2 as we said was played we have bishop to e7 now e4 you see white gets now really really uh, beautiful central control with both uh, with this uh, three pawns in the center we have now d5 c takes d5 and the problem is now okay uh, you have lost the privilege of casting by uh, this line 
king uh, bishop to f1 but actually when we think about it harder it's not such a huge problem because you have already played the move g3 and now after king to f1 uh, king to g2 uh, the king is perfectly fine here the king is not so in danger because you see now that actually this king is very good on g2 and it's very good that we have the rook on on the h file because we can launch now a very very early flank attack with h4 h5 so you see now after king to f1 we have okay e takes d5 but now after e5 okay knight to e4 was played and now h4 immediately why is this h4 move really a possibility here because i think we have to understand now what's going on in the center of the board we have now this d4 uh, and e5 expansion and we have here this blocked out pawn structure and you see now the pawn structure is already showing us that we should attack the king side we should just try some ideas of f4 f5 maybe g4 g5 we should just let its pawns rolling but it's very very hard to make that happen because your own king is lit bit exposed we have to say it we have several light for weaknesses here because we have traded off the light for bishop so as i said maybe it's not so easy to attack but at least we know where to attack sometimes in chess we don't know where to attack because the position is not saying uh, to us where we should uh, create some attacking chances but now with this block, block pawn structure in the center it's obvious that white should launch an attack with uh, simply on this side of the board so after move h4 we have queen to d7 king to g2 king side counting and now knight to c3 uh challenging the knight on this, uh, e4 immediately you could maybe try to defend yourself with move f5 uh to maybe fix your knight uh, here in the center of the board but actually with queen to b3 uh i think uh, comes the huge position problem uh, there is a weakness around the square d5 the problem is effort potential i don't know knight to c3 b takes c3 uh, for black also uh, the move f4 is not working i've um, calculated this uh, this move at home i've uh, searched some tactical possibilities after this move it seemed to me at home when i analyzed the game that this could be an interesting idea for black because for instance if you take bishop to f4 then rook to f4 and after g takes f4 uh, queen to g4 would be probably a winning continuation for black but uh, black uh, pardon me white doesn't have to play the game like this after move rook to f4 you can play here a very very annoying move e6 and uh, this is something that you should not forget because also we have the tension here on this diagonal something could happen now after queen to e6 you see now rook to e1 is going to happen now the bishop is hanging the d5 pawn is hanging the rook is hanging so it's a lost game i think here for for black so the activity that uh, white is gaining here is really uh, beautiful so as i said you should be careful it's not so easy to make something out of this so here after move knight to c3 um the um, the theory engine realized that it's time to take something and took simply the bishop on uh, d2 because the bishop is also uh, here a very very important piece because in some occasions uh, after potential h5 move black could maybe try some h6 move in order to uh, block a potential activity here further progress here of whites on h6 and then when the pawn gets on h6 many times you will probably face a tactical shot of bishop sacrifice on h6 maybe not immediately but in a later stage of the game when maybe white is activating more pieces in the game but when white maybe creates sort of a queen and bishop battery maybe here on c1 then bishop on d2 then bishop to h6 i think would be very interesting idea you should also not forget about it so that's why this move knight to d2 also makes sense here by theory to just get rid of the potential activity of the dark square bishop so here after queen to d2 we have knight to c6 ethereal develops the piece pretty normal stuff queen to d3 and now after knight to d8 now stockfish from this point on is simply attacking in a stockfish beautiful way so here stockfish plays immediately knight to g5 and threatens of course uh here the checkmate on h7 so it's already a simple threat idea by stockfish of course you have to make something uh here's g6 was played and now f4 uh in the continuation we have knight to e6 and now comes a beautiful move rook to h2 of course with the idea to play rook to h1 trying to of course somehow open the h file h takes g6 and trying at least some kind of an attacking uh, possibility on the h file maybe there are even some checkmate threats with rook to h8 followed with rook to h7 but i think at least we're threatening something so it's obvious where this go uh, where this game is going now black has to defend this position if black defends this position in a good way then black has good chances but if black uh, doesn't defend it of course a uh, stockfish will show its uh, great great attacking formation skills so here if we move rook to h2 we have now c5 uh, so when you get attacked on the flanks 
one of the basic rules in chess you should uh, says that you should counterattack in the center of the board so that's why c5 makes sense because after d takes c5 of course something like knight to c5 could happen then the queen has to move from this diagonal in the in the continuation we have now the stunner i think this is the first stunner uh here by stockwish stockwish plays now the move f5 and uh, this is really well tough because if you play of course g takes f5 this doesn't make sense because queen to f5 and here the checkmate threat is here so that's why you have to play sort of a dubious move knight to f4 uh, creating a check because the queen is hanging now queen to f4 is a must move but of course this is completely winning for white with an extra piece so that's the only way to prolong the game so after move f5 you have to make a reaction the only good move is of course here knight to d5 uh, knight to d4 and here stockwish uh, continues the pressure play simply f6 this is very important because uh we have to kick away now the bishop here the continuation after bishop to ed8 i think it's a good compensation for the lost pawn because we have now the opportunity in maybe a couple more moves to play something like queen to d2 and then even sneak in with the queen here on h6 and also to deliver checkmate on uh, on g7 so that's why uh here after move bishop to dx first uh, what stockfish did is of course controls here the f5 square because if you play knight to f5 immediately then we could push the pawn immediately here to h5 and this would be i think a perfect position because here you could maybe try c4 but now with queen to f3 you see uh the problem is now you can maybe activate the bishop but now the the, the h file will get opened you can maybe try to defend your h file somehow with the queen but now rook to h7 is winning the game if you take with the h pawn then okay rook to h1 and i'm not seeing a good way how to defend its position this is now a forced checkmate so very very important move this move rook to f1 uh, to control the f5 square because now i think black would love to come here on f5 and um, trade off the queen so this was now a good move here by the top of change so after move rook to f1 uh, we have now h5 stopping the potential h5 move by white and now comes the second stunner i think of the game now comes a beautiful move g4 and this move really surprised me at home really really well tough uh, g4 what to do here of course if you play h6 g4 then we'll simply let it spawn the with h5 and then we will open the position so you have to react that's the beauty about stockfish attack you have to react you cannot just lean back and try to defend the position here stockfish plays g4 uh, and makes you sweat here already because you have to take queen to g4 and i was really curious what's going on why would you sacrifice the pawn like this uh, you're inviting your opponent queen into the game but actually the beauty about this move is of course to open the g file that's the stockfish idea here just to open the file so just to um, try to get something around the square g6 if maybe something like queen to g6 comes in a good way then uh, the position could be destroyed here in front of the king so it was really really a beautiful shot here by the top fish engine okay king to h1 you have to react now knight to f5 but again a new stunner by stockfish stockfish sacrifices now another pawn on h4 we have queen to h4 and now knight to h3 and that was the beauty about this stockfish attack so stockfish sacrifice now three pawns uh, just in order to open the g file and the h file and okay the knight on h3 is here perfectly fine it's uh, controlled by the knight but now there is of course the tactical threat of playing queen to f5 uh, or rook to f5 for instance if you tried c4 then of course queen to f5 is winning the game immediately uh, queen to h3 uh, is not possible because the queen is also protecting the h3 from this square so this was really really a beautiful attack by the stockfish engines knight to h3 now you see the activity the knight will Will eventually come on f4 uh maybe then further with an attack around the square g6 the queen is active both of these rooks are very very active and what we shouldn't forget this knight will also come into the game very very easily because knight to d5 is now huge opportunity from this square of course uh, white has also good activity so we have here knight to uh, king to h8 getting out of the range because as we said queen to f5 was the huge threat and now knight to d5 now stockfish get at least uh, one pawn back we have bishop to f6 this is the must move you have to sacrifice uh here the bishop because even if we try i don't know something like rook to g8 to to compete somehow on um uh on uh here the file because you can maybe try something else rook to b8 then rook to f5 we should not forget about this kind of a tactic g uh, g takes f5 queen to f5 
so again there are there many many uh, tactical ideas queen to e3 here is also an opportunity to in include the queen here on h6 so as we said if the queen sneaks in here in a beautiful way you get probably checkmated so as we said even if you try here something like rook to g8 we'll see now why is it so important to sacrifice here the bishop even if you try to play rook to g8 it's i think um, also a decent idea at least to control the g6 square now you get e6 and that's the beauty about these two pawns these pawns are mobile now you can let this pawns rolling if you play something like i don't know uh, f takes e6 then of course f7 is going to happen uh, if you play rook to g7 you get a promotion so yeah, that's why you have to play rook to f8 but now with knight to f4 look at this you lose the battle here around the square g6 so it's game over so that's why in this position you have to take uh, uh, for instance is the pawn on f6 but now again uh, e takes f7 you can play now rook to g7 because now f8 is not a threat the rook is controlling this but now comes also a beautiful idea again knight to f4 you see how these knights are dancing uh, now in the continuation you could try maybe something like knight to uh, e7 to protect your pawn on uh, g6 but now with queen to e3 the game is over for instance you could try a rook to f8 to again try to take out this pawn but now with knight to g6 uh, here knight to g6 this is not the point that we want to take the knight or something we want again to sneak in with the queen on h6 as i said in the beginning of the video if the queen gets somehow on dark horse into the game then the game is over you could maybe try to cover yourself but now this uh, comes with a beautiful checkmate queen to f8 knight to f8 and now for instance rook to g8 it's also a beautiful tactical shot so so many dirty dirty ideas are possible here for white so everything is perfectly fine so as we said after move knight to d5 i just wanted to show you that basically no the fence is working you have to sacrifice rook to g8 we have seen it's not rook to b8 also not good so it's game over so bishop to f6 as we said e takes f6 we have knight to h6 and now knight to f4 again with some dirty ideas of rook to g6 followed with knight to g6 and similar stuff creating some forks maybe including the queen into the game so it's a bad position for black so we have rook from a to d8 queen to c3 again with some ideas knight to g6 or rook to g6 and then with some ideas of c7 uh, then to this to create the discovered check and then also activate also the pawn so really really beautiful tactic shots that are possible so we have king to g8 getting out of the potential range of the queen we have uh, rook to g5 we have a rook to um, uh, d6 attacking the pawn queen to e5 attacking the rook we have a rook to d4 and now queen to c7 now of course the thre threat is something like rook to g6 and for f takes g6 of course we would have a checkmate on g7 so this is something that bothers now black so that's why a rook to um, f4 we have rook to g6 anyway we have king to h7 and now rook to g7 now when the king moves to h8 finally queen to f4 and this was now a completely winning game but okay here of course queen to h3 we have here uh, king to g1 but uh, when we count now the the um uh, the material it's obvious a winning game here for white white is uh up uh, in exchange is also the uh, knight is endangered here so uh it's a gay loss game here for black so we have knight to g4 we have rook to e1 we have queen to h4 rook to e7 activating now both of these rooks on on the seventh rank we have rook to d8 and now a beautiful move by stockfish stockfish plays king to g2 and this is really wild because no checks are possible it seems to me so that the king is so naked that there are so many things that could be possible here for black but actually nothing is working still uh, you see rook to d2 is even not working because we can play queen to d2 and even if you try some checks uh, queen to h2 king to f3 for instance if you take then you get checkmated here on on e8 uh, so it's not working so nothing is working here for black which is really wild because the king is so naked but you cannot really attack the king that's really really wild stuff so here queen uh, queen to f6 we have queen to f6 that was the only way to prolong the game we have rook to f7 knight to d5 but now stockfish creates first some checks gets rid of the king uh, decoys the king a little bit further to, to the center and now takes out this very annoying pawn on a7 so king to g8 this was a very important pawn i think to take because if it would not be possible if it would be not possible to take the pawn then maybe but just maybe black could create something out of this three versus two pawn majority on the queen side so that's why it's very important i think to take out this one and now it's an obvious winning game for white so king to g8 rook to d7 forces a further 
trades of rooks which is of course a simplification and works simply uh fine for white so knight to f4 king to f3 knight to g6 and now stockfish simply uh attacks this pawn and in one particular moment stockfish can take we have knight to d3 we have uh, a4 simply pushing the pawn further here stockfish continues the progress h4 king to h4 uh, we have here a promotion of the queen king to d4 now stockfish includes the pieces into the game cuts off the king's activity and now uh, create some checks here uh, queen to e1 and it was game over in this position it was a beautiful beautiful checkmate so really mortal stuff uh, really wild game by stockfish let's go back to this i think critical moments of the game so first f5 really beautiful stunning tactic knight to d4 e f6 kicking with the bishop paralyzing the whole position now rook to f1 very important move to cut off this potential move by the knight here we have h5 and now g4 that was the beautiful move uh we have uh, king to queen to g4 now after king to h1 now this was also really beautiful king to, rook to g2 uh, sacrificing another pawn but now with knight to h3 we have seen after knight to d5 knight to f4 that this was the huge huge tactical threat some tactics around us for g6 and it was game over for the theory engine so i hope that you enjoyed the game i really really enjoyed it a lot interesting ideas i've never seen something like this before if you want to see more brutal attacks like this check out my comments to chat games play by computer series with some more games played by this uh, this brutal stockfish engine and some other top engines that we have seen in history and if you want to see maybe some other ideas of the queen's indian and nimzo indian you can also check out my nimzo indian defense series where we have seen some interesting ideas some structural ideas like this uh we have analyzed also the game a a little bit more from black perspective you can also check it out and maybe include into your opening repertoire and if you like this content uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course